Alexa, turn the studio on. Okay. If you know me, you know that I love physical buttons, which is why this has transformed my production process. I've built this studio space so that I can make videos very quickly. I gave you a tour of it a little while ago, which I'll link to above if you missed that, but it struck me the other day that I've never shown you how I actually make the videos. And a bit like this studio, I've built an editing process that is efficient and fast, for me at least, which is down to three things. Final Cut Pro, which I could not live without, the process I've built around it, and the Loop Deck Live, which I showed you at the start of this video. Loop Deck are very kindly sponsoring this video. They gave me this Loop Deck Live to test and to build into my workflow. I've done that, and it has been... Well, it's been amazing. So today I'm gonna to show you the process of editing a video from start to finish and how this little thing has changed the game for me. So what is a Loop Deck Live? Well, if you've ever heard of a Stream Deck, it's similar to that, but better. And the reason for that is quite simple. It has basically all of these little squares on here, which are completely customizable. Basically, everything on this device can be customized. And you can put links to websites, apps, certain functions within apps themselves onto these little screens, these individual little screens, which is very cool for shortcuts, stops you having to use things like keyboard shortcuts. But where this absolutely takes things to a different level is because of these things, proper physical buttons, twisty things. I love all that stuff. And if you know me, you probably know that I'm not gonna dig deeply into everything this can do because I just don't need to get that complicated with it. All I wanted from this Loop Deck Live was to improve my production process for editing videos in Final Cut Pro. So what I've done is map the controls and the knobs and all the stuff on here to very specific things that I do every single day in Final Cut Pro. So let's edit a video. Now the great thing about Loop Deck Live is that it changes based on what you're doing on your computer. So at the moment, as you can see here, I've got my standard Loop Deck screen. I've got some system controls like volume, you know, play and pause, links to common apps, so things like Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, YouTube. But if I go into Final Cut Pro on my laptop, it immediately switches to Final Cut Pro mode. And this is the first page I've set up. You can have loads of pages via these buttons here, as you can see here. And everything on here, as I mentioned, is completely customizable, including these bits here, where we can swipe up and down and put even more controls. And I've set up on here, this first Final Cut Pro screen, the most common actions I use. And the first job I always have with these video edits is to sort out the absolute mess of A-roll. Now, A-roll is me doing this. It's me talking to camera, waffling on about map books and headphones. Now, quite often at the end of that process, I have a massive amount of footage to sort through. So if we come into Final Cut Pro now, you can see the result of an A-roll shoot and it's, well, it's 30 minutes of me waffling. And there's loads of stuff in here I don't need. I need to get this down basically to eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes at most. And this is where the editing process begins. And this is called killing your darlings, which is a horrible phrase, but it basically means going through and getting rid of the stuff that does not need to be in there. And the great thing with the Loop Deck Live is that I can control pretty much everything I need to do, basically, from this thing here. So it's got things like zoom. I can zoom into the timeline, so you can see that zooming in and out like that. That's very, very nice. And if we go back to the start of the clip here, it's also got these kind of frame jumps, so I can jump forward 10 frames at a time. And if I wanna get really specific with where I'm making cuts and things, I can even go one frame at a time. So I can really zoom in if I need to, like this. And if, let's say, I need to make a cut right there, just there, I can position it there, press that, and that's made a cut for me. And then I can just click on the bit I don't need and delete it. So that's really straightforward. You can do all of that with the keyboard, with the trackpad, but there's something very accurate about doing it with that little knob. And this A-roll process continues, so I'll play through, listen to myself, listen to myself making mistakes like that, think, okay, we don't need any of that stuff there, but I wanna cut it out, and I wanna cut it out just before that strange little audio blip at the bottom there. And if I wanna see the audio in more detail, I can do that with the Loop Deck Live as well. So I can just scroll up here and increase the size of the waveform. I can see just there, if I come back down, go one frame, I wanna get rid of that. So I can just click there, cut it, get rid of it, 
gone. And then I've got a clean edit. The other thing that I do at this stage of the A-roll edit is sort out the colour, give it a bit of a colour grade. I'm not a colourist, I've learnt this myself, I've spent a long time watching other people doing it, and again, like I said at the start of this video, I've just built a process around colour grading which is fast and efficient. So if we come back into here, let's just get that audio waveform back down to where it was, good stuff, and we'll go over to the right hand side, and what I'm going to do is add a colour wheels correction, which is this one here. And this gives me access to all of these knobs and slides and things here. Now, before the Loop Deck Live, I'd come on here and use my mouse to really kind of try and get the balance right with all this sort of stuff. I'm used to doing that, it works, but it's not very tactile. This is, thankfully. So what I can do is go into the colour section, and now I have access to all of these knobs and things that are on the screen on here. So for instance, if I want to change the overall saturation of the image, give it a bit more colour, I can press Wheels Global on here, and that gives me access to the global saturation slider at the top. And rather than using my mouse, I can just twist the knob, twist? Twist the knob a little bit like this, and get the, get it just right. So just get the colour balance right. I don't want it to be too, too kind of washed in colour, but that feels about right to me. The other thing I then do is improve the contrast of the image a bit, so drop the blacks, raise the highs a little bit. And to do that, I'll start with the shadows, so we just go to Wheels, Shadows, and then we'll do Shadows Brightness, which we will just, just drop down again a little notch like that. Nice, and then we'll do the same thing with the highlights, so, although in this case we'll increase the highlights a little bit just to brighten the image. Nice, that's looking good. And at any time, I can double check. I can, I can kind of do like an A-B test between what I've done. So if I press uh, select FX on off, as you can see there, I can just see what my changes look like. Pretty happy with that, really. Mid-tones, I will probably just bring down the brightness of those. That helps bring out skin tones and stuff as well. There we go, give that, give it another check. That's looking pretty good. Then, if I want to render that image, I can do that. So we go back to my home screen and just do render all. And that will render it, get it ready to publish when I eventually publish it. That alone is just so much quicker than messing around with a mouse. Now don't worry, I'm not going to sit here and go through this entire A-roll edit with you. You've got better things to be doing. Instead, I'm going to do the classic Blue Peter thing, little one for the UK audience there, and show you one that I made earlier. So this is a completed A-roll edit. As you can see, I've completely removed loads of stuff. So there's lots and lots of edits here, as you can see with these little lines between each of these clips. All of the rubbish has gone. All of the mistakes, all of the ums and ers, and the bits that I didn't want in there, and the waffling has just been banished forever. And that is the start of the editing process pretty much done. And I've not shown you that much on the Loop Deck Live. In fact, all I've really done is use the frame jumps, you know, the 10 frames, the one frame, changing clip height, changing that audio waveform height just to see what I'm doing, using the backspace to delete things, the cut tool, all of that stuff, the colour editing as well. That's it. I've not done much with it, but it's those tiny little additions to this workflow that have removed the need to rely on keyboard shortcuts. That's when I love tech. I love when tech does this. It just does something very simple. You can kind of get rid of all the complexity that it can do. It doesn't get in the way at all. And just use the bare functionality that makes your day much much easier. Next up we have the addition of B-roll, which is the exciting bit. It's when we can add images of products and all that sort of stuff. So all the kind of footage that I shoot of the thing that I'm talking about, that now gets overlaid on top of the A-roll. And in this instance, obviously I have lots of footage of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. These are all my clips here that I've shot previously. And now it's just a case really of going through this A-roll, listening back to it, and adding B-roll where it feels most appropriate. And again, the Loop Deck Live comes in very handy here because I can very quickly zoom into where I want to be. I can get exactly where I want to be to put that B-roll on. And B-roll, for me, has to be very specifically placed and very accurately placed as well. And one of the most important things for me is adding B-roll in the exact right place. And again, that is where these little frame jumps come in handy. So if I know that I want the B-roll exactly to appear right there, I'm a bit finicky like this, that's just me. But I want it just to appear there. I can use the one frame jump to position the cursor, then grab the piece of B-roll that I want and let Final Cut Pro snap it to that exact point. That makes me very happy indeed. The other thing that I often do at this stage is add text overlays, which are normally there to 
further explain something I'm talking about on the screen or correct mistakes more often than not. And they're called basic titles in Final Cut Pro. Adding them is quite straightforward. It's just a keyboard shortcut. But for whatever reason, I always just found that quite annoying. So now I have a button specifically for adding a basic title on the Loop Deck Live. So what I do, I come on here. So again, I keep talking about it. I'm a bit boring, sorry. But this one frame adjustment, getting it exactly right. So if I want right there, that is where I want the text to appear. All I do now is press add basic title, bang, it's there. I can't not mention the undo button, which is just fantastic. Now undo, that's a universal thing, command Z, fine, but I'd rather just press a button. So if I didn't want to add that title, for instance, I can just press undo, which is this number one here. It's gone, done, happy with that. And back to the B-roll, I just keep adding B-roll to the video like this. It's very straightforward, it's a lot of fun, this process pick out the bits that I want, but I end up with this, where I've got lots of B-roll that also needs color grading. So again, I turn to the Loop Deck Live, and it's just so quick. So I come back onto here, I add a color wheel correction on here, and then straight into color, and I'm back into wheels global. But the other thing that is really useful is that I can very easily copy and paste settings. So I this might not be the best way of doing it, if you do color grading a different way, we all do it differently, I think, to be honest, but I, this is the way that I do it. So I do the color grading on each clip and then copy the settings once I'm happy with them and paste them onto the other clips that haven't been color graded yet. However, it does require an annoying combination of keys on the keyboard. Not anymore, thanks to this. So again, if I'm just gonna change the color here of this clip, let's just do it very quickly, show you how quickly I can do this. Um, let's bring the shadows down again, a bit like that. This is a very, like I say, a very quick and dirty, I do take a bit longer normally, but this is a quick and dirty example. Um, let's just say that, let's just double check. Yeah, and that's looking good. Then if I go back to my home screen, I can basically do a copy attributes. That copies all of those settings, all of those color settings go onto the next clip and do paste all attributes and bang, there we go. I've got my pasted color corrections on that clip. The other thing that I take very great care with is audio. That is very, very important to me. And again, the Loop Deck Live comes in very handy there. So there's a separate audio section on this. So if I just quickly go back to my clips and make sure we can see plenty of that audio waveform, nice. We're just gonna zoom out as well so we can see the entire project. Happy with that, good stuff. And the first thing I do to make sure there's no annoying clicks where I've made edits. So when you make an edit, a hard cut between point A and point B on a piece of footage, the audio can sometimes click when you join them together because there's no natural flow. It just kind of clicks and clashes, it's horrible. And in Final Cut Pro, you can get rid of that by adding audio fades, but it's one of those features that's hidden away in a stupid menu somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is select all of my audio and on the loop deck, go into audio and then just do apply audio fades, done. But you can do lots more stuff in here. You can add keyframes very easily. So if you wanna add a keyframe to a piece of audio here, for instance, I can just press that and then press it here again. This is very useful if you wanna introduce little fades in like that, very, very useful. Adding keyframes, again, you can do with a keyboard shortcut, but look how much easier that is. I just choose the section where I want to add the keyframe, hit that, I want it to end there, and then I can change it. So easy, but you can do so much more. You can disable the audio very quickly if you wanna monitor things. You can match audio, you can detach it from a clip if you want to do something with it. Oh, and select all, I forgot to do that. I mean, that would have been an easier way of doing it. I've just discovered that. I didn't realize you can actually do select all rather than doing the mouse thing. There you go, I've just literally discovered something I didn't know it did, and that is a big time saver as well. A finished video looks something like this, and it looks probably looks like a bit of a mess actually, but these are basically all of the clips, all of the A-roll, all the B-roll, all of the little text overlays, the little graphics and things that I add, everything is done. That is an entire video finished and ready to upload. I have I've found, I've got to be honest, that the Loop Deck Live has probably, it's difficult to put a time on how much effort it saves, but it's definitely making the editing process two things a bit quicker, but more importantly, more accurate. And also I'm spending less time trying to remember keyboard shortcuts, trying to think, what was that shortcut I used to use for that? Well, I don't have to do that anymore. There is just a button on there that I press and it's done. And while I'm here, I think it's worth showing you how easy it is to configure this yourself. This takes me into the Loop Deck software, which gives me this live preview of the Loop Deck itself, which matches what is on the screen. So if I press a button on the Loop Deck, 
it will take me into there. Now it's currently set to the Final Cut Pro profile, but if I go back to my Mac OS default one, and one of the most common things I've done with this home screen is add links to common websites and apps that I use. So let's say I wanted to create a link to my own website because I'm a YouTuber and I'm obsessed with myself. Basically on here, I can go into web page, give it a name, so we'll call it MER for Mark Ellis Reviews, paste in the address, click on Create, and then that creates that button for me, and I can just simply drag it onto the loop deck, and then, as if by magic, it appears on the loop deck itself, and when I press that, it will take me to my website. That's really, really handy, but again, going back to Final Cut Pro, they've got all of these profiles built in, After Effects, Audition, Illustrator, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop. Honestly guys, if you use Photoshop, I'm not a big Photoshop user, or Lightroom for instance, this is amazing in terms of giving you those physical controls for your most commonly used features. If you just spend some time in here like I have done and set it up the way you want it, if you just sit down and think, right, what things do I use all the time, then it's just so easy to do and it's worth that effort. So again, if I go into my Final Cut Pro screen here, this isn't what came with Loop Deck. They gave me like a, well, it gives you a kind of default set of what it thinks is the most commonly used features in Final Cut Pro. It didn't quite match with me. So instead of having to keep going into editing and color, I added these things here like render all, those copy attributes, paste attributes. And then I realized that you can add even more stuff down here. So. As, as, you, as you've probably seen earlier in the video, I've been swiping on here to get access to different features. So I can swipe on here, and again, whatever I do on here is mirrored on the software, and I can start to add other things to those adjustments. It's got macros as well, so you can create a very specific command for whatever it is that you need to do. But the key conclusion I've drawn with the Loop Deck Live is that that stuff doesn't get in the way. Like I said earlier, it's one of those things where you make it work the way that you want it to work. And this is now firmly a part of my production process. And the great thing is, as you've discovered during this video, is that you keep finding things to add to it. So my advice is if you get a Loop Deck Live, don't sit there and do that thing where you think, right, what do I do? What are my most common features? But don't go overboard. Just make a list of the things that you do all the time and add them to your own pages. And over time, you'll build this great little thing that is personalized for you and which is making you more efficient. So I'm in the process of editing this video now and I've just realized I completely forgot to plug my Final Cut Pro Skillshare class. And that goes into much more detail about this editing process. It takes you through the exact steps I go through and you can try it for free. So just click the link in the description and go and check it out. So I'd like to thank Loop Deck again for sponsoring this video and sending me this Loop Deck live. It has changed things for me, guys, so thank you. I've just had some great news from Loop Deck. They've just sent me an email, which I've got here. And basically, if you're a Final Cut Pro user like me, they've launched a new plugin. The plugin is called Command Post. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. But basically, it gives you more options with the Loop Deck and Final Cut Pro, including rotate, scaling, positioning, cropping and distorting the image with the dials. Big thumbs up. The color wheels are now more sensitive with this plugin, that's good news. And you can add things like effects, transitions, and generators with a button on the Loop Deck Live. There's, it does lots of other stuff as well, but I just wanted to quickly mention that before I publish this video. Again, I'll put a link to Command Post in the description, and I'm gonna check it out right away. And if you wanna check out Loop Deck yourself, just click the link in the description. And if you've still got some time and you wanna see more of what goes on behind the scenes in this studio, keep watching for a link to my full production desk tour video.